Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. As always, thanks for checking out this video. Here on my channel, I like to feature a lot of helpful and practical information for guitarists and recording guitarists. Especially if you do a lot of home recording, then I think you will find a lot of valuable content here on the channel. That being said, if that sounds like something you're into, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Today, we're talking about this. This is a 5e3, or otherwise known as a Tweed Deluxe. I built this about six months ago from a kit offered by Trinity Amps. The cabinets were built by Mark Steven, or otherwise known as Guitar Cabinet Outlet on Reverb.com. If you want more info on either one of those, be sure to check the links in the description. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some of the pros and cons of the 5e3 circuit, some things that it can't do and some limitations that it has. If you're considering building an amp like this or just buying an amp like this, there'll definitely be lots of good info for you. We'll take a listen to a demo that has a variety of different tones from the amp, just so you can see and hear what it can do. I said this in my initial build video, but I had a blast building this amp. Um, it was really fun just figuring it all out and seeing it all come together. And now there's definitely a sense of pride I have in this amp that I built it. So every time I fire it up to record or if I, I take it out and play it somewhere, you know, it's like, man, this is super cool. Like I built this and it sounds great. One of the great things about a 5e3 is that you can get a wide variety of tones. Now, you might not think that an amp with two volume controls and a tone knob is the most versatile, but with the mods that I did to this amp and then how just the volume controls work together and kind of interact, you can get everything from great clean tones to just all out overdrive and even some sounds that sound kind of like a fuzz pedal. Tweed Deluxe's break up really early, especially in their stock setup. But for me, this is really great. I love when I set it cleaner that it's already starting to compress. I'm already getting a little bit of overdrive in there that just makes it sound really sweet. If you're used to something like a Deluxe Reverb or even you know a higher wattage Fender, you're definitely not going to get the clean headroom that you would typically be used to. Now, I will also say that I don't necessarily feel like this is the best pedal format amp. I typically like an amp that has a little more headroom that I set on the edge of breakup and I can hit with overdrives. But I feel like when you start stacking overdrives and you start turning this amp up, they just start kind of saturating the amp more and more and it, it doesn't necessarily serve as that kind of 
clean bass tone for stacking overdrives a lot. Now, this is one of those things that's kind of a pro and a con. I like this amp for the overdrive that I can get from it and how it reacts to boost and really hitting the front end hard. So, um, you know, it kind of forces me to do that. It forces me not to do what I would normally do, which is a lot of fun and kind of pushes me in some different directions. Tweed style overdrive is its own unique thing and it's not going to be for everyone. It's a little looser, it's a little more raw, especially in its stock format. The low end is gonna get flubby. It's not necessarily going to be as tight as something like a deluxe reverb or a different style amp. But for me, I've really enjoyed that. Again, it's just something different. I also experimented with speakers for this amp. When I first started, I had a Celestian Gold in there, which was okay, but then I moved to a Weber 12A125, which is an American style Alnico speaker. I really like this speaker, but I found after a while, just the natural compression of an Alnico speaker paired with the natural compression and overdrive of this amp, just lacked something for me. I wanted something that was a little punchier that didn't compress as much. So then I moved to what I currently have in here, which is an Eminence SC64. It's an American style ceramic speaker. It's a little more efficient, it's a little punchier, and for me, it makes this amp a little more versatile. So I've seen a lot of people talk about just the overall volume of a Tweed Deluxe. Now it's definitely a lower wattage amp, it's about 15 watts, but you're not going to get a ton of clean headroom when you're playing with a drummer. Even with the mods that I did on this amp, um, times when I've played beside a drummer and I need a cleaner sound, I'm kind of right there on the verge of, of being able to get it as clean as I want to. So if that's usually how you run things, you might not be able to get that from it. Um, unless your drummer is just exceptionally quiet or something, um, you might have a hard time getting this amp to stay clean when playing in a band setting. Now, if you like to get overdrive from your amp, this is great for that. I think it sits in a great sweet spot of being able to overdrive but not be overly loud. For home playing, I really enjoy it um, on the cleaner sounds. Again, it compresses and starts to overdrive really soon without getting too loud. So especially paired with a speaker that's maybe not incredibly efficient like the Weber, um, it can be really great for at home playing. So who is the Tweed Deluxe for? I think if you love classic guitar tones, you can't go wrong with owning a Tweed Deluxe. It's not going to cover everything for you, especially if you need loads of volume or headroom, but there are lots of great sounds to be had in there. For me, when I'm recording and in the studio, I've loved having the versatility and the just different tones that I can get from this amp that I haven't been able to get otherwise. There's definitely something special about having a tweed compared to having a pedal that just replicates that. If you're thinking about building a 5e3, I definitely say go for it. Do your research, do what you need to do to make sure that you have a successful build, but I have been really happy with the experience and really happy with the amp. It's been great. That's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you found some of the info helpful for you if you're trying to make a decision about buying or building a 5e3. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.